You're listening to World of Empowerment Radio. Your station for practical spirituality in a changing world. And here are your hosts, Angel Rose and Ahanu. Well, you are very welcome, Karen. Why, thank you, Ahanu and Angel. It's such a pleasure to be here. Yeah. It is a pleasure. It to is be here indeed. Today. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so different these days from what it used to be all those years ago in upstate New York when we first met. But we're talking now about the future. And we're excited about the future, although a lot of people are not. A lot of people are really in fear about what's going on with climate and so on. So can you give us a little bit of a background as to what your interest is in climate and how you got involved in it? Well, for the past, I'm going to say 15 years or so, I've been in the world of media and filmmaking and um for even longer branding and PR and all of the above. And what I've been doing is, God, the, you know, the, the whole climate industry, I'm finding that those that are in the know, the scientists and the professionals that have been studying all these years, they're, they're putting graphs out there and they're putting details out there that the general public just literally doesn't understand. And then you have all the celebrities screaming at the top of their lungs, climate action, climate action. Okay, so I wanna bring the practical solutions with Inger Mehta, who I met last year at the Con Film Festival. We worked on a big event at the Ritz Carlton Hotel on the uh, International Day of Biodiversity. And we really realized the commonality of, of what she does and what I do and how to, you know, bring the two different things together so that we could do something that is not only innovative that nobody's really done before, but also get the information out to people, the very clear information. What do you have to do in your house? What can you do in your house, in your office, in your schools? What can you do right now to shift into the positive, toward the positive direction of repairing and restoring what's been going on for these years within the climate? And that's what our focus is, repair and restoration and information. So how have you set that up? Good question. So what Anger Medic came to the table with a lot of people that she's already been working with because she started the World Climate School in, the United, um, in uh, Norway four years ago at the beginning of COVID. And she started it with a bunch of people. If you go to our website, worldclimateschool.us, you'll see the history there of some of the people that she started this with back in Norway. What we're working to do is start it here in the United States. And it'll be a separate but partnering entity with the World Climate School in Norway. Mm -hmm. Did I answer your question? Yeah. <laughs> well, many people, many people would know, Karen, that a couple of weeks ago, we did a piece with a lady here in Sedona who was very concerned about pollution in the Verde River, for example. And a lot of people responded very positively to that realizing that this was part of man, mankind's uh, negative influence on the environment. And do you see that as part of your work with the World Climate School? Yes. Um, we will be stepping out there as time goes on. We will be stepping out there to, um, to make some noise with some of these companies that are not Go, really going in a sustainable direction um, and that are still harming the environment. And those companies have to be held accountable in the court of public opinion, as far as I believe. Right. Yeah. So what we're gonna have to do is create those campaigns to bring the awareness um, to the people that these companies are doing that, you know, mm -hmm. harming the and environment. And it's not just companies. I mean, we're finding local authorities are engaged. And in local this authorities, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, and, and how teaching communities 
how to make noise within their own community if they see something going wrong. You know, mm-hmm. you, you have to police your own backyards, so to speak. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I admire one of the things that you talked to us about very recently, and that was the education of young people. So and I know we will be speaking with Inger very shortly when she comes online. And perhaps we might use this opportunity, Karen, just to explain what she's doing in Norway right now. I believe it's it's Easter time for her. It's and Easter. that's why she's slightly yeah. delayed. Just explain that. She is up in the mountains. Um, in Norway with her family and they all gather for a week at Easter time and they they ski (laughs) they ski and they ski and they ski and um, you know I said where are you and she said she said you know it's there's a lot of snow here and I said how much and she said a meter I said and of course you know being from the United States we don't measure (laughs) in meters we measure in feet and then I said what is that like three and a half feet. And she said, it's up to my waist. (laughs) Right. Yes. (laughs) Like, how are you moving around? How did you even get in the house? And she said her brother came by and uh, plowed all the snow before they arrived, which was wonderful. Right. Yes. So she will be joining us very shortly. Yes. But tell us about your work with the education side of it and trying to involve young people. And then we'll hear what Inger has to say. We're working with a young man named Augustin who is, uh, he's just phenomenal. Um, He has wrangled 3,500 kids from around the world, you know, teens, and he's teaching them how to utilize uh, smartphone filmmaking for climate action and activism. And he's got something up right now. If you go to our website, you can see um, it's called... uh, uh, reforesting for peace and he's teaching them um, and they'll get a certificate it's a seven to eight course you know they have to take seven to eight courses of this program that he's putting together um, and then they they learn how to how to film and they go out and they start doing their thing but they'll also get a certificate hmm. and why do you think it's necessary to to educate young people about this. I mean, would it would it make more sense to tackle the people in power who are causing a lot of the issues? Well, I think it's the young people that shift the consciousness of the people that are in power. I think that you know, if you know, as a as a parent, as a grandparent, those kids come running in and go, "Mom, that goes in recycling," right? And yeah. when that start, you know, it's that simple little bit of information that starts shifting, you know, the people in a house. It's those kids that go, you know, I don't, when I was a kid, when I saw, the, what was that commercial with the Native American Indian guy standing on the side of the road and people were throwing garbage out of a station wagon and he was crying and it was a Keep America Beautiful campaign. Right. I mean, I watched that that commercial and it made me cry i was a teeny little kid and i you know that brought me to awareness that commercial so you know there are things out there just very basic pure things you can do some people have a deep abiding respect for the natural beauty that was once this country and some people don't people start pollution people can stop it that get to people's hearts and these kids it's just so important yes so let's use this opportunity to play a little video that karen and inger have on their website and we'll be back in a moment flowers and clouds rivers and rain the beautiful things around me Sing it out loud, shiver is a way I tell you what I feel and see Oh, uh-huh Places I've been to tomorrow Will you be mine or just keeping free? Thoughts and expectations and stronger affections The future is a mystery oh. To keep working hard To find what I want I'm in need of the right Refill and 
that is women who will something summer for winter spring words that are interesting words inspire the fire that burns inside me and my generation that's an inspiration Remember I ran fast If someone believed I could do Friends are supporting me Brings out the best I can be And it pushes me through Oh I'll show them my will Something summer, fall, winter, spring And share some interesting words Inspire the fire that burns Inside me and my generation That's inspiration Yeah, I was asking you about programs and projects you have for young people? These uh, the programs that are up right now are for everyone. But what our intention um, is to create programs like a plant a tree reforesting, you know, fire areas in the United States or hurricane areas and where we're going to work with the kids in the schools to um, grow native trees from the seeds. Uh, here she comes where we're going to um, have native seeds for those areas so that people are actually planting what belongs in that area. So that is one program that we're working on. Um, mm -hmm. I believe Inger has joined us. Yes. <laughs> hi, Inger. Hi, Inger, how are you today? Hi, hi, hi there. Good You're afternoon. having a nice time in the snow. A little hairy, are you? We do have. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I've no doubt that that snow is quite natural there in Norway. It's not a product of climate change, is it, by any chance? Not really. It's more or less the same as it's been for many, many years. Yes, yes, yes. Good. You're very welcome to the World of Empowerment. Before you came on, we were having a little discussion with Karen, who was giving us a little bit of background as to how you met and what it is that you're doing. Now, you based in Norway, Inger, what is your interest in promoting the uh, climate school in the United States? Like, wh what do you feel is to be gained from that? Well, thank you for the question. It is a um, somehow difficult question, but also an easy question. It's, it's a little bit closing the circle for me because I've been, strangely enough, I was in the United States uh, in my youth. So I was there when I was 19, 20 years old. So I was organizing a lot of like a trade excursion for, for the university of my students uh, group at the time. And we went to Epcot centers and we presented a, a different Norwegian products for the Epcot center to, do, to, to sell and a commercial okay. excursion journey. So we landed in New York, we went to the embassy in Washington, D.C. I ended up in Virginia, Richmond, and we ended up to Atlanta. Uh, we were driving in a bus all the way down to Atlanta, nice. and then down to Miami. And then from Miami, we fly over to Los Angeles. And then, you know, I then from there, I fly, fly over to Cleveland. Mm -hmm. So that I... was the... So it was an early 90s, like before the 90s. It was 89. Right. And then yes, we, yes. and then in the mid 90s, I was traveling to Buffalo, upstate to uh, uh, New York for the Creative Problem Solving Institute in June, like a week long ex workshops on creativity and, uh, you know, how can we really create um, nice. a, a future, you know? Yeah. yeah so so yeah. when you ask, when, what is the World Climate School? And United States, you know, the it's the most important thing is actually to connect back 
to what I'm like now, like 30 years later, I'm working with youth around the world and uh, I see the, the uh, what, you know, the importance that to collaborate with youth from Europe to United States, youth from Norway, like the United States, um, from the Afro-American diaspora back to Egypt, back, back to the west coast of Africa or the landlocked countries of Africa. I'm working on all these directions uh, mm. for the World yes. Climate School. Mm. Yes, and we've heard you've also done some training with young people in the climate area in uh, the likes of uh, India or Pakistan. Is that correct? Absolutely. It's uh, when we started off with the World Climate School. Uh, the, as a school, it's it's uh, it's still like um like only three years back in 2020 during Corona. And we start having online training and pilots with Pakistan. And it's also very, very important to do that because, you know, the uh, the climate change and the flooding, the, the, the melting of the glaciers up in the Himalayas. Uh, I think the question about India is also very interesting. Uh, I have been twice to India in last fall. And the reason for that was to come to the a school, uh, Montessori school in India in the city of Lucknow. I was invited by Sunita Gandhi and uh, an organization called Devi Sanstan. And this is not only the biggest school on the planet with uh, over 60,000 pupils. It is also a program that we developed called uh, Foundational Literacy and Numeracy. So in 45 days, the program is actually accelerated learning uh, for all. So we can speed up, it's disruptive, it's speed up, it's fast learning. And it means that we are able to tackle the literacy problem, especially after COVID, together with climate literacy. And I think that's uh, something that is different and uh, than many other climate engagement is that we, let, let's also face the challenge of, of illiterate problems, especially after COVID. And Karen, you, I, I also told you about this beautiful initiative from India, and you can please come in and share your my enthusiasm well, it's really, about it. It's really amazing because they're teaching kids to read and do math in what three months instead of three years, and wow. right. <laughs> hmm. So we're looking at bringing this program along, you know, as we merge it with climate. Um, awareness, bringing it here to the United States in a way that those that are really need to to learn English um, have a have a route to do it in a in an easy way that it's not so extreme of it taking mm. them three years to learn a language. I mean, anybody that you know here, you can learn how to speak and read and write English in three months. Who that's you know, remarkable. Remarkable, and it just shows you the. The power of bringing that creative creativity to what you do that's wonderful yeah we like we thank you <laughs> we like to merge um concepts it is. and creative people with climate and um teachers with climate and if we can make everybody in all these different um you know genres work together with climate as a thread I think we're going to be able to really make some serious changes. Beautiful. So it's so, a worldwide thing and it's a worldwide reach you're looking for, even though you have a US based domain name. It, it's a uh, world uh, climate school dot US. Absolutely. It's a uh, world climate school dot US. And I think we decided on doing it in that way because I think it's uh, United States in itself is a huge continent and, and the diversity is huge. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, we can learn from different uh, ecosystems like uh, from the landlocked Africa or from landlocked Tibet, mm -hmm. uh, you know, but it, it doesn't feel right or if it, it feels right that the, that the climate engagement within the United States can has its own, uh, uh, what can I say, the own 
way of expressing its uh, localized problems, challenges. Um, and yes, well, cl climate challenges are global, but you know, it's lo the solutions are localized. It's in your local background, it's in your local community. That's uh, where the solutions are. You know, it goes from so, the kelp. It goes from the kelp in the in the um, oceans in California and and Florida and the Keys with all of the the um, um, the coral reefs that are being just so unbelievably damaged. Um, the hurricanes that are flying into Florida. The flooding. That, we have somebody on our team, Sandra, who actually had to move from her house in Florida because she got flooded out during a hurricane. She had to, you know, she just, you know, sold it and left. Um, and and we're hearing this just too much. I live out we in the are, desert. Indeed. I live out indeed. in the desert in California. It has hit 128 degrees where I am yes, in the, pe yeah. you know, over the summers in the past couple yeah. of years. And it's, it's a terrifying experience. If God forbid the air conditioner goes out during that time, you're literally yes. cooking. Yes, indeed. We just got news the other day that certain companies like State Farm and others are refusing to insure people in states like California now because of the wildflower fires and because of climate change. So is that something, Inger, that you can tackle or can help people with? Like, let's say in Florida or Georgia or wherever that they can't get insurance on their home. What can you do with your with the movement? Well, it's quite interesting. I've been working with the Nippon Life Insurance from from Japan, and uh, this thing about uh, the consequences of insurance company to really insure you know, houses and places that that you know it it will happen again. The flooding and the hurricanes will happen again, and um, uh, I I will not be able to express that we uh, we have the solution for the World Climate School that we can help. But what I know from from my I'm also on the board of the, the Green Cross Sweden and there's is an organization called Glo Global Green and Global uh, Green Cross International and they started out of New Orleans. And you know the Hurricane Katrina when that happened um and um and it's still people are still suffering. It, they, they, the houses you don't have houses you know and mm. um, so how and, and they are working on how can we help people that are meeting the climate change and the, the force of nature uh, front line you know right. how can that be, be how can we help and, and for World Climate School how can we help uh, children how can we help uh, teachers how can we help to empower the youth to really understand that uh, in a way we are together on this yes um yeah. i yeah. don't know if that was a good question but uh, i take a, a follow up question on it you know the how can we come together you know that's the thing yeah yeah well when you mention about coming together i mean that's a that's a noble aspiration do you feel alone though in your work like do you feel isolated do you feel that people are listening to you do you feel any support from governments oh, yes. or from institutions? Yeah, tell us about the support you're getting. You know, the, um, uh, I think it's um, it's something called the undercurrent, the, uh, the, the unseen trends. This is not a trend. This is not a, a, a fashionable thing to really say that we like to care about the, uh, the climate or learn more about the weather patterns and how it's changing. It looks like the grassroots of NGOs, of people, youth worldwide are engaging in, in doing something. So uh, so that is um, it's building its own momentum and that we don't see it. So it's like uh, popping up differently than we think. And um, when it comes, let's, let's, let me get an example from the Norwegian context. Uh, yes, we are an oil producing company. Yes, we produce oil gas, and we are one of those countries with a very small uh, population, and still we're having a huge income from the oil and gas 
sector in in Europe, and we we are that's the situation. Uh, but still, there is something that happened during the early nineties when the uh, Rio conference started in nineteen ninety two in in Rio, Brazil, with the the with the, the with the Brundtland Report and the Sustainable Development Goals, which started then, the Agenda 21 started then. So you had a very top-down process with the United Nations coming forward. And, and that has still, that has been the, the drive. And and Norway at that time, with the Prime Minister Gru Harlem Brundtland, she made a, a, a changes in the Norwegian constitution called the, the environmental paragraph in the constitution that we have to secure that the f- children and future gener- generation will have a future. So that is in the constitution still mm. with that uh, uh, amendment or what that, that, that kind of changes of profound responsibility. It is not working. You know, it's a wicked problem. The governments cannot do it all, alone. The multinationals are not doing uh, able to adjust and to do something that is profound, um, and and part of it we know it's like uh, the keeping business as normal is like uh, a speed of um, of um, you know have a growth economy that is growing and growing and growing, and that that do not go together with having a a paradigm of circle economy, of creating values differently, um, having a profound shift in values. That is, um, yeah. 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 So, yeah. So how, do you, how would you address a problem on a personal level if you're speaking to normal people, not government officials, not organizations, but just the common people? What kind of advice would you like to give them or what kind of what would you like to say to them in terms of what they can do to start shifting yeah. their consciousness around this? Well, it um, as the Norwegian one of the co-founder of Norwegian from Norway, uh, psychologist uh, and grandparents retired. Um, it seems like the 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 fear for the future of not knowing. Uh, you know, you know, it's like a dooming uh, perspective for the future. But it seems like the medicine for that is to get engaged. It's to do something. Mm-hmm. It's to, uh, and that's where I think maybe Karen can assist me as well. It's a, it's a new narrative. It's a narrative of the beauty of nature. It's a narrative of connecting with nature. And I right. think that... Uh, and everything that is the sustainable development goals, like it's very top down. It's like nature is out there, and you know. But the 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 inner nature, human nature, um, that is actually the inner transformational structure that we're talking about, and the inner sustainable development goals. And yeah. uh, so, so it is. To, the answer is. To, yeah, go Come on, Karen. <laughs> no, I think I think people just have to be really aware of everything from the packaging they're buying um, to you know doing little things like if they can avoid using plastic bags and bring reusable bags or bring the plastic bags back again to the grocery store for a second fill up or a third fill up. You know, I think there are certain things that we can do on a daily basis. Just make sure you're recycling. Um, be conscious of how much water you're using, uh, how much, how you know, how much air conditioning you're using. Just keep really aware of of how much your consum- your personal consumption is mm-hmm. in your yeah. world, and yeah. and also be aware of, you know. If you want to go out and plant a tree, go out and plant a tree. If you Mm. want to do, you know, that's that's the oxygen for the planet. These trees, these forests, right? Can I ask you, Karen, because I've certainly come across this in my own life, where sometimes people, if something doesn't affect somebody, then they're not interested. So, and and the same is true of climate change. Like for example, if 
a hurricane goes up the east coast of the United States, the people in the Midlands are not going to say, well, it doesn't affect me, so climate change is, is only, it's their problem, for example. Or equally in California, where there's wildfires and if it doesn't affect us in Arizona, well, then that's their problem, not ours. What do you say to that kind of an attitude or how can you bridge that gap? Well, I think that there is a big piece of compassion missing. <laughs> and right. I think that um, that everyone should start to be conscious of that which is not only around them, but are what, what's happening to other people on the planet because we are on one planet. And it's like yes. having one big house, everybody's in the house. And so the fire didn't happen in the den. It happened in the bedroom on the other side of the house, but I'm, I'm okay in the den. No, yeah. it's, you know, everybody's being affected. And so it's about thinking more globally about everything. Is that more yeah, or less? The world is so small right now that, you know, yeah. it's, we can, we can talk to each other from three locations around the world right now and mm -hmm. very easily. And we could sit here and bring on people from another eight countries if we wanted to. Uh, right. That is telling us how connected we all are. Um, and mm. if we don't, if we don't do something and take action, literally, mm. you know, within our own space, yeah. and just be aware of what you're eating. Be aware of the chemicals in the food. The the you know, there's so many puzzle pieces to this that are so layered and it goes so deep yeah um just just start doing some research start understanding what's happening in your in your environment and and shift the way you think about it mm -hmm. you know don't yeah. buy the products that are just you know I, there's a lot of fake food out there people are yes. consuming it but it's not really food it's not a nutrient rich substance mm -hmm. <laughs> so you know, in order to go ahead, Inger. No, it's um, it's the bigger question of getting the carbon footprint down, um, and to the complex issues of uh, chemical balance in the atmosphere, and and it seems like it's not it's not only CO two or methane gas that is uh, greenhouse gases, but it's also the way. Um, the heating of the ocean comes up. You know, it's like the biggest system thing, uh, systems of earth science that is kind of uh, relevant for us and for ordinary people, common people, you know, that is too complicated. But still we understand it somehow. And um, so, so these small action points we can take, yes, in our private lives, but the complex thing of um, the transportation industry, the oil and gas industry, and the coal industry, how to put a you know how to reduce these big industries that are polluting, how to have cities, urban cities that is less car based cities, you know those bigger in infrastructure changes that must be take place. And on the other side, we see this beauty of, of urban uh, urban farming. We see the inner greening aspect of cities, the planting of trees for shadows, making, you know, cities more beautiful as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah. I noticed that, lot, you know. I, I noticed that you guys have already garnered a lot of support, like corporate support. You have a number of sponsors. And I want to ask you about those sponsors. I think it's wonderful that you've done that. But does that represent a shift that's happening? Because I know in my experience, whenever I was looking for sponsors, they would always ask what's in it for me. In other words, there was that old style corporate attitude that I, you know, you give me this and I'll give you that. Is that the case with sponsors of climate change? Are they looking for something in return or are they being magnanimous and saying, yes, we recognize a problem and we want to help. Well, I think what you saw on our website were our corporate partners and our NGO partners. Um, that's who's up there right now. Um, 
We are looking for sponsors right now. We're working on getting grants. We definitely need support. Uh, we've put up a GoFundMe for that support, and you can leave that link for your um, for your listeners. Um, but I mean, are they helping? They're helping. Yes, they are. Um, the process of grant writing, the process of getting those corporate sponsors, it's a it's a very tedious process, mm -hmm. which is why a lot of people just don't do it. Um, and um, so, you know, there's a lot of questions to be to be answered. Um, they have to know that you are exactly who you say you are, understandably so. And, um, you know, it's there's a lot of there's a lot of work that has to be done. Uh, Inger and I have uh, assembled an incredible team of people um, that have jumped on board to partner with us. And you can look again on the website at worldclimateschool.us and look on our about page and you'll see some of the people that we've brought on board. Um, we have comedian Eddie Brill, for example. Eddie is a dear friend of mine, and he was he was the warm up guy on David Letterman for 17 years, warming up David's audiences. So we have a lot of really fun people, um, creative. They're all incredibly artistic. We have um, Ed Lands, who there are 1,800 domes around the world, and he actually puts VR movies, films inside these domes, and you can walk into the dome as a kid, as an adult, you can learn about what's going on in the world from inside the dome in a fully immersive situation. We've got Mia, Mia Hanek, who's working with Act Now XR, uh, her organization, and Millennium Art. And Mia is the one that, uh, in 2015, did the projections on the, on, um, the Empire State Building of the endangered species. And if you look on YouTube, you can see that as well. And that was just a phenomenal, I mean, it really visually blew everybody's socks off. Uh, we're also working with Mia for a 2025 um, Rearctic event um, regarding uh, glaciers, uh, melting glaciers, and to help awareness on that level. And she will be um, in three cities in the United States and in Norway and Oslo, and I believe Japan, Inger? Correct. Yep. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and um, she's going to be projecting um, the whole her whole film on the Oslo Norway um, Opera House, which is a stunning, stunning building. And it's gonna be an amazing visual event. So, you know, we have a lot of different things in place right now that we're already doing. And these are people that Inger has been working with for some time. So we're just bringing it all together. I'm bringing together the, the celebrity PR end of it. Inger's bringing together all of the knowledge and experience she's had in climate over the past, what, 25 years, 30 years. Um, she started in, in fashion and, uh, um, sustainable fashion. So, you know, what we want to do with this is, you know, everything we can. We want to make this as big as we possibly can make it, um, where we, we have sustainable fashion, you know, World Climate School, things to wear and, and everything. We just want to do it all because sure. the, we really feel like the more awareness and the more learning and the more we can teach kids those kids grow into adults so that's like our planting of seeds teaching kids well i asked inger a few moments ago about the corporate sponsor side of things and i'm assuming that you are not only seeking financial support from the corporate world how can people help you on a smaller scale, individuals indeed, who might be able to contribute, how can they contribute to support your work? Yes, correct. It's uh, one, one thing is the big corporate sponsors. And, and you know, the, these days, nothing is happening in isolation. We have to get out of the, the um, 
uh, sectors that we're working. So, for example, when it comes to uh, corporate so social responsibility and the governance structure of multinationals, you see that that is actually where they need um, NGOs, not-for-profit organization to be in partnership. So the partnership structures are so important these days to solve the complex problems that we have. And when it comes to individuals, you know, right now we're having the, the GoFundMe campaign up and we're launching this this, this week. So we, we like to get the, uh, let, I said, let's get 500, you know, individuals first to join us, to be noticed as the, 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 you know, like a founders or the first initial circle of people that comes comes joining us for in the United States. And I, I think we can reach that. And and from there we're going into the 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 more corporate circles where we really have to have this uh, intergenerational learning across sectors, you know, from fashion to food to music. And uh, as Karen said, you know, the the most important thing here is the creative capital we as humans bring. And the way we are able to work, communicate with, with each other in, in our families, in our homes. And that's a tough one too. And, and then it comes to the, this thing about creative collaborative culture. How do we do mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. And one of the things we do with the Royal Climate School is that we work with uh, William Massa. And with this summer, we're going to have a creative summer camp in, in Boston. And, uh, and I think that's going to be quite cool. And we say that cool people will cool the planet and and to restore the climate. It's not only for for human beings, it's also for the animals. It's for all of us, you know, it's for the, the complex ecosystem of life. And mm -hmm. Karen, why don't you tell more about uh, our friend Bill in uh, in Boston, how you how you as an uh, US citizen see the <laughs> creativity from Bill? Well, Bill Massa is an educator and he's also a branding expert. And what he's done is he's taken color and, and, um, and, and all your senses, and he teaches through all the senses how to experience a brand, whether that brand is climate or that brand is anything else. Now, he has worked with Ferragamo and Ferrari and some of the most important, biggest wine makers in Italy over the years. And now he's in Boston teaching. And Inger's gonna come for two weeks to Boston and teach at LaSalle University. Um, I believe it's $3,000 per student. They will spend two weeks, they get room, food, everything and learning for those two weeks. And they can come from anywhere in the country or anywhere around the world. Um, Absolutely. And they're housed and cared for. And uh, it takes, uh, we have, uh, I think, 197 spaces total available for this summer. Yes, yes? correct. Yes. It is. yes, 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 yes. So, so, uh, so yes, it, you can see more on the website. You can see the whole program is up on our website. Yeah. Creative Capital. And I think that is the burning fire in our hearts, you know. It's like the, one thing is to understand and have awareness about the, the challenges we have we're facing, but the other thing is to come forward with the with what our heart really love to do, and that can make life better for all of us. How can we do that? And and that's where we kind of have a a shift. Some mm -hmm. of the climate challenges and the face the the, the confronting reality we have, uh, it's like it can be the opposite than worse you know many of the challenges are bad mm, and yeah. right now and you know by really facing that together when we have the creative capital coming together having a strategy to create new fibers for fashion to understand that the linear economy is not going is not going the right way we have to see how we can reduce waste uh, you know, there's something hmm. so we put overproducing, right? So, uh, yeah. well, and there's that's a couple what... of there's a couple of important things that you mentioned there. Uh, two very interesting metaphors that you used. You said there's a burning fire in our hearts, 
And then you also said that cool people will cool the planet. Both of those really interesting. Now, I'm remarking about them because I think you and Karen are very cool and 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 it's very clear that you're in a cool place and you're in a cool place with three feet of snow. But I, I'm remarking and I'm impressed by the, you being cool because there's no doubt that you are attracting the kind of people who will and are making a change. And I think that's wonderful. And we're certainly very grateful to have you on and speak to us about this. Thank you. And indeed, if there's even if it helps one person in the world to wake up or grow up or become aware or contribute in some way or help to slow down this this climate change issue, it would be fantastic. It would have been worthwhile. Would you want to say anything before we close, Angela? Yeah, I just want to say that um, during COVID, we were in Ireland at the time and we were gone there to teach. But of course, the lockdown happened right when we got there, so we couldn't go anywhere. Nobody could go anywhere. They could go within a mile to go to the grocery store. But what we noticed is within a week, like the sky had totally cleared, the waters were clear, and that was from nobody using automobiles, of course. Mm -hmm. The streets were completely empty. And I remember thinking at the time, like, what could we possibly use for transportation without all these cars and uh, because it was so obvious that the planet had actually healed herself you know take away the take away the problem and the planet can heal itself yeah. so um i remember i was just kind of astounded by how quickly the skies mm -hmm. cleared and she did that and also the air cleared and the water cleared and um mm -hmm. but i did think that the problem really was all the cars that people drive so many every day in the crowded highways and it was just kind of surreal with nobody out anywhere like nobody was on yeah. the streets and it was kind of an interesting phenomenon mm, wasn't it the case also that a lot of animals were going back to their native habitats too that had been pushed out by development and so on and the, and so nature was like as if it was restoring itself and that was an it interesting did. development yeah and the yeah. animals felt like no threat right no yeah. threat so they could go back to their normal drinking holes and all this and that. But um, it was actually a quite beautiful experience. Remember I said we were locked down in heaven. That's you right. Know, watching that happen. <laughs> yeah. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, same yeah, thing yeah, happened yeah, here. The sky cleared so beautifully and the air was so clean here in the desert. It was like, you know, it was an obvious, just as you said, an yeah. obvious that the planet can start rejuvenating itself if we just stopped for a minute. And, yes. yeah. you know, how do we get that to happen again? I have no idea. <laughs> not well, not I think that you're way. Starting it. You're, you're, you're already doing it. I think what you're doing is wonderful. And like I say, we're delighted to be able to contribute in some small way and spread the word. So they can, people can contribute any amount to your GoFundMe, right? We will put a notice to that, but they will find that GoFundMe page on your website as well. That's correct, Inger, yeah? Correct. There's a yes, little donation correct. button at the top. Mm -hmm. And it'll take you yeah. right over to the GoFundMe page. Yes, yeah. great. Okay, well, look. And if people want to interview to join your team, can they feel free to email you guys and call you? Sure, they can definitely interview. We are open to anyone joining to spread the word of what we're doing. Um, yeah, we would love great. that. Great. Absolutely. All right. It's well, the thank you, thank you, Inger, for taking time out from your family there in Norway and taking your time off the slopes, the beautiful snow there in Norway. We appreciate you spending the time with us. And thanks, Karen, from California for talking to us about this wonderful venture that you're doing with Inger and the World Climate School US. We will post the links below. Again, much appreciated and blessings on your work. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. We so thank much. both of you so much for having us. Thank you. Okay, thank bye you. bye. You can subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, and on our website at worldofempowerment.com. Don't miss an episode. Hit the subscribe button now.